Hello and welcome to episode 3 of my Let's Play Crastorio Space Exploration series. Ah, that's quite a mouthful. I'm imagining I'm going to get that wrong many, many times. Anyway, in the last episode... Oh, don't be too bad. No, we're not. Okay. In the last episode, we built a whole load of factory, which is not turned on. Uh, but we will need it at some point in time. So we built a whole load of pulverizers so we can deal with some... Uh, uh, what is it? Uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. What is it? Seam fragments? Something or other. Core, core fragments. That's what we're going to deal with with these pulverizers. We also dealt with some iron and steel. And we've got the computer chips laid down. And we got the copper laid down. And what I want to do next is I want to deal with the other things that I need. So I need oil. I need gas and chemicals. I need uh, rare metals. And I need stone, glass, silicon. I need those kind of... may not sound like it, but there were kind of four sections there. Um, and... What I need to do is I need to move the camera. It's quite because I need what I, where I want to move the camera to. I want to start off with oil, and I want to put oil here for for reasons that aren't really explainable. That's just where I, where, where my gut tells me it should go. So I'm going to put the oil here. Then I'm going to deal with uh, chemicals and gas here, and then rare metals and stone, or maybe stone and then rare metals, depending on how I feel about it. But at the moment, the camera is down here for copper, and I want to move it all the way up here so I can deal with oil first. Which is quite annoying, you know. It's quite a long way to go. And I, I, I want to come up with some nice transition to get there because it's you know, eight to ten seconds of your life and be something nice. It's a nice opportunity to create something. So it's going to take me a little while. But from your perspective, it's going to start right now. So there we have a basic oil setup. It is a basic oil setup. There still needs to be some work done to it. Um, but for the time being, I think this will do the job. Um, let me just take you right back to the beginning. So before I started laying it down, um, I was thinking about the oil output, this excess oil that's coming from these pulverizers. So I'm thinking about redundancy. How do I build in a system that can deal with this oil um, and then also deal with a permanent supply of oil coming from somewhere else? So how do I build in a system that can do both of those jobs? And this, we're going back to that redundancy argument from before. And I thought about it a lot, and the, conclusion, the ultimate conclusion I came to was, well, why bother? Because we can burn this excess oil in a flare. So I was like, well, okay, what's the point? Um, and then I started building it, and I just did it anyway. So what we have is... These pipes here, these are the pipes coming from the pulverizers, which are directly below it. I mean, this is one of the reasons why I wanted oil directly above, was to feed the oil straight up. Maybe maybe not an important reason, but it was one nonetheless. Um, these, this goes specifically into a set of uh, oil refineries, which just deals with this oil. And then it outputs the, the various components, the petroleum and the light and the heavy oils, into this bank of pipes... And then this bank of pipes feeds these main processes. So we've got plastic, sulfuric acid, sulfur, explosives. Um, we've got lube over here. And this is the heavy oil to light oil cracking and the light oil, <clears throat> light oil to petroleum cracking. So I, I, I kind of call this the balancing. So this is going to balance whatever is in these, these whatever these refineries output. So if we're... If we need more petroleum and we've got too much light oil, then these will kick into gear. And these tanks, this is here to measure the various flows, the reg measure the various amounts in each of the pipes. And depending on what those values are, it will activate these units in here, which will balance the oil uh, that's coming out of these refineries, which is coming specifically from just the pulverizers. And then at the top of the screen, we've got a whole another bank of refineries. And these are the refineries which are going to deal with the permanent oil supply. So I'm going to hook these up to some trains. And then they're going to be permanently supplied with oil. And then whatever they output out 
in the same way that the other refiners are doing, they're going to output to this same bank of pipes. But I'm going to build some pumps in here which restrict the flow of these refineries so that it always keeps a certain amount of slack in the system so that these refineries at the bottom can always output something. So none of these should ever fill up. You know, depending on their balance, these ones will kick into gear, but they should never fill up because we're going to limit the flow into them. They might fill up as a result of this uh, primary process of the stuff coming from the refinery, uh, from the pulverizers. If it fills up from that process, then what it means is that we, we've, we, we've filled up with plastic, we've filled up with all of these things. So this system is kind of designed to use this excess oil, but also have ec more stuff added to it to make up for whatever deficit is created by this stuff. So that's kind of the idea. I've, I've tried to address it in the same way that I've addressed the iron, the copper, and the stone. And I'm going to try and do the same with the other things. I'm not, you know, this is not necessarily going to be limited to all of this. I, I, I don't want to rely on the flares. Um, if I can come up with some good systems to to use that stuff. I mean, if the flares come into use and I have to use them, then, then so be it. But I want to try and at least you know address the, pu the, the the puzzle. I mean, that's what this is to me. This is a big, big old puzzle. And building a factory to be able to address that puzzle is 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 very interesting to me. You know, I'm going to have a lot of fun playing around with this, trying to get it just right. So I, I'm still going. I'm going to follow that philosophy throughout. <clears throat> now I've not finished it because well, a couple of reasons. One is because I've got this huge patch of iron, um, and I don't really want to just remove it, build over it. I want to. I want to use this. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, to start with, I'm just going to activate this right-hand side of the map. And then I'll use this iron. And then once this gets depleted, I'll add more. Because I don't really need a lot of oil processing to begin with. I just need something. Um, I just need something to progress the science. And I think that this half will do the job. The other thing that I'm worried about, um, well, there's a couple of things, more things to be... <laughs> This hasn't got any balancing in it. The the oil, the heavy oil to light oil cracking, or the light oil to petroleum cracking. This hasn't got any of it of it in it yet. You know, when I close off this system, this is just going to be left to its own devices to build up whatever imbalances it's going to create. So I think this might need some modification. I think I might need to squeeze some chemical. I'm going to might move the top half away. Maybe squeeze some chemical plants in the middle to deal with that balancing. Maybe I'll add double this again. And I'll, ha I'll have some balancing in here. I don't really know what I need with regards to long term. You know, there's a lot of things that oil could, that, that, a lot of things that could be reliant on oil. You know, rocket fuel, for example, that I just, I'm not in a position to really consider. Um, I just really want to focus on the things that I need. Um, and I think this will do the job. I mean, that's kind of why I've left this big gap down the middle. Because it means that if I've got some further processes down the line that I need this oil from, um, I can feed any inputs and outputs down the middle. You know, I've kind of got two separate, you know, fitting these big, these big wide blocks. They're actually quite tricky. It takes a little bit. I, I tend to find it takes a little bit of creative thought to get it done. And the way that I've tried to do it is to have these kind of two separate mini buses along, so along either side to deal with each of these. And then I'll have more stuff coming up here to deal with further things at the top. Um, and that's really the factory layout. But I've also been looking at <laughs> formulas because you know that's what I do so let's have a look at some oil processing because some of it is relevant um, so a few years ago I made a video entitled calculating the SPM for a gen for a uh, whatever I'm gonna try and link it in the screen if I remember it's a long time ago and I just have just rewatched it because I need to familiar my re familiarize myself for re familiarize myself with the with the approach that I set out in that video because it it's useful to what we're talking about here. So what we have is two different types of oil processing and it's not really clear which one is the one we want to use. So we've got this one which is advanced oil processing and this use this is what we get from that. We get slightly more light oil than any of the other components but we've also got this one over here which is crude oil processing and in this one we get more heavy oil than the other components. Now in that video, I, I lay out, you know, how to assess the value of these sorts of things, and I, the value is based on the fact that 
Um, petroleum is the most important thing. So we want to be able to use the system which generates the most amount of petroleum because we can turn heavy oil into light oil and then light oil into petroleum. So which one of these systems creates the most petroleum at the end of the day? And what I found, oh, I didn't do the character. Let me just do a, hmm, what have I done? Eight, six, seven, seven, eight, seven, eight, eight. Sixteen percent. So this uh, advanced oil processing will generate 16% more petroleum than this crude oil one. So it, just by that sort of assessment, the, the approach to go with would be this one, the advanced oil processing. But this one has a slight flaw in that what if petroleum isn't the most important thing? What if we need more heavy oil? Because this one produces a lot of light oil and we can turn that light oil into petroleum, but it has a and not a lot of heavy oil and we can't go back in the process so if we have some processes in the factory which require a lot of heavy oil then this is the process that we would want to use and it would be slightly less efficient in generating petroleum but it would create a lot more of the other things that we would need and i suppose it would be easier because we could just we could just make more chemical plants because that's what we would need you know if we're dead if we're generating more heavy oil then we would need more chemical plants to be able to turn that heavy oil into light oil than we would with advanced processing and that's kind of the relevance that i'm trying to get to the bottom of here you know how many of these chemical plants do i need to balance this oil stuff um depending on which one of these it's a complicated, you know, it's complicated philosophy. And ultimately, what I'm getting to the grips, what I'm coming to the conclusion of is that I think I want to use a bit of both. You know, I want to use this one, the advanced oil processing, because it is more efficient in generating petroleum. And petroleum is generally the more important element. And I think I want some refineries which create this so that I will know that I've always got some heavy oil. So in terms of calculations, you know, it's going to be somewhere in the middle of these two. I think in the end because that's not what I've built I mean to be honest I've built it in such a way that I should be able to choose I should not I should I should be able to just switch it from one to the other but anyway there's a decision down the line about which one of those approaches I use um, how much of one or the other do I dedicate certain parts of the factory towards and also how much more factory does oil processing really need this will get me to the next science um, and that's really the, the priority. So I'm going to leave it. At, I'm going to leave the oil processing right here for the moment and progress with the other areas. And then I'll probably have a little think about how I want to deal with this and come back to it because this was probably going to be one of the first things I need to turn on. You know, I'm looking at science, and the science that I need is the chemical science, the blue one. Where is it? Which I don't have. I've not researched it yet because I'm a numpty. This one, which I need, red circuits glass and sulfuric acid to do and all of those things i can't make at the moment but hopefully with some oil i'll be able to make sulfuric acid and with the plastic i will do the, the advanced circuits and then the glass i'm going to get to momentarily once i've dealt with gases and chemicals because that's the next thing on the list so let's move the camera i mean this is becoming a bit of a ritual now moving the camera build some paths I don't know although I don't think I'm going to build any paths this time I think that what I've got is probably a, going to suit me I don't really want to close off the top at the moment because I'm still not sure about where things are going this block might get bigger so let's move the camera and let's deal with some gases and some other acids and materials and other stuff <laughs>
Right, a couple of things we need to talk about here. Firstly, gas and chemicals mostly done. I would say 80-90% done. Um, and the big gap in the middle, this is obviously where the bus is going to go. But I don't really know how to do it yet because, I mean, to give you an example, this is the, um, the sand electrolysis stuff. So sand goes in and we get chlorine and hydrogen out. And everything is connected up right. Ignore the damage. Uh, everything and all of the pipes are connected up in the right way. I just don't know which is which. So one of these is chlorine and one of these is hydrogen. But until... Oh, actually, that's wrong. I know what the, this one is. Let's move on. <laughs> this one. Water separation. Uh, exactly. What I, just ignore what I was saying a moment ago. Um, so I, I, oxygen and hydrogen are coming out of this block. But I don't know which is which. Because I can't unlock it yet. And it's stuck behind chemical science. So I don't really know how I would route it through unless I was just kind of guessing. I don't really want to guess. Um, and that's kind of the same throughout this block. I don't really know what any... I mean, this one I know, I think. What is this block doing? Oh, this is doing hydrogen chloride. This is doing ammonia and nitrogen. And this is doing lithium. So I think I've got most of the main bases covered. Um, but I obviously need to deal with the bus, but I need to unlock the stuff. This isn't as critical as uh, oil and petrol and that stuff is. This is less critical. Um, so I can deal with the bus a little bit later. That's less of a problem. And you know what? I quite enjoy doing the bus. It's quite a nice thing to, to do just to arrange everything nicely. So I, I can leave that bit for later. That's not a problem. Uh, the second thing I wanted to talk about was all of this damage that I've got. So I'm getting regularly peppered now with these meteors, meteorites. Um, yeah, it's not very nice. And a solar flare hit me and took out a really big chunk of the factory down here. That wasn't very nice either. <laughs> I've got, I think this was meteorites over here. I've got another gap here. This has been peppered a few times. I've got a few gaps. You know, all in all, it's just, it's, it's very unsatisfying to have this factory slowly being eaten away at me. But, I mean, ultimately, I'm building it quicker than it's being deleted from me. And this is a little blueprint, so I can just copy one of the other blocks. And that shouldn't be too much of a problem. I, th I figured once I've got the factory up to a point where it's ready to be turned on, I'll run around and deal with all of these things at the same time, rather than dealing with them as and when they happen. Um, the last thing that I wanted to talk about was coal so my starter factory was being fed by a rare, fairly decent patch of coal that was up here uh, that's now mostly gone um, and I didn't have any other real patches of coal I could exploit so I had to turn off the starter factory for a period of time you know period of time probably four or five hours really while I built this kind of chemical gas block I really just wanted to concentrate on it you know once I'm run to, I didn't want to move away from it. I was focused on it. So while, while I was focused on it, I just had to switch everything off. Um, and that was why I was just kind of making a bigger base, building some coal mines, and routing that back through these uh, steam engines so I can get the power back. The um, starter factory is now switched on again um, and now starting to create some uh, pretty serious noise, which is what it wasn't doing before. To be honest, I was having some nice peace from the biters. They were leaving me alone. It was quite nice. Anyway... Moving onwards, because we need to crack on. We're not finished yet. Uh, stone, glass, silicon. That's what's next. So that's going to go here. Let's get on with it. Okay, 
I kind of got sight of the finish line and got carried away. Um, so I built this part. I'll come back to this in a second. Um, I want to let's go back a few steps and have a chat about this over here first. So what we have over here is the block that deals with the stone. And I've basically set it up exactly as I said I was going to set it up. So we've got these two banks of furnaces first up. And these are the two furnaces which are going to deal with the overflow of stone from the network. So any stone that's in, in we got too much of it, it goes here. And then it gets shipped up to green chips to be made into a green chip. Then we have a bank of furnaces which deals with the stone blocks that the rest of the factory needs. So this will just be a permanent supply. Um, then we have glass and sand <clears throat> and quartz and silicon. I think I've, I've, I've got another block to go up here for coke. Um, but I haven't done that one yet. That's going to go in there at some point in time when I need it. I just got sight of the finish line. Got carried away. Um, so... <laughs> The idea is here that the stone that comes from those pulverizers can, should potentially be able to reconvert it into anything else that the factory needs. And then if that gets over, if that starts overflowing, then that stone goes to here and it goes to green chips. So th that stone that comes from the pulverizers, it should be able to go to any of these processes. It, it, with with that with priority as well, because we want to we want to take that stone out of the system as quickly as possible. I mean, to be honest, this block's relatively straightforward. It, 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 it's not doing very, very complicated things. You know, to, be, to a certain extent, a lot of the complicated things we've dealt with already. Um, this is just a lot of processes stacked up. Well, at least that's the way I see it. Anyway. So that's stone. And then I've kind of made this little block over here to deal with rare metals. Now, rare metals, is, it's basically the same as iron and copper. It's doing exactly the same job. We've just got to swap... Uh, sulfuric acid for hydro, hydrogen chloride. Um, but the main issue that I that we have, well, that we're going to probably have with rare metals, is that we don't have a process to burn it, or at least we don't have it yet. At some point in the future, we're going to have access to this process here in a industrial furnace, and this will turn a, a two rare raw rare metals into one rare metals whereas the enriched process the process that i've built on the map this will turn uh, one and a half raw rare metals into one so we've got a ratio we've got the diff the, the the two bounds of what we can burn in this factory are between one and one and a half and one to two so like, there's very little opportunity to burn these rare metals. That's what that's really what I'm trying to get to. You know, in order for the factory to burn it, it has to exist within that one to one and a half, one to two ratio of of how much this rare metals we actually need. And anywhere, any any anything above that, and um, we're going to have too much of it. So I don't know whether we're going to end up with some chests or something that stores this stuff. That's also not to mention that. These rare metals, they basically go into a lot of the advanced things. Advanced conveyor belts and advanced inserters and such. So we're not going to get to that for quite some time. So where's this going to go? I I can only hope that uh, blue chips... Um, or I think it's mainly blue chips. Where was... There was another one, I'm sure. Nitric acid... Blue chip. That's really always. Well, that's, that's really always going. Mm, rare metals might be tricky in terms of having a, some sort of a balance for this puzzle. The rare metals is a tricky one, but everything else on this list I think I've dealt with. You know, iron, copper, coal. We can just chuck that into a steam turbine. That shouldn't that shouldn't be too much of a problem. Stone we dealt with. Uranium we can deal with that. Rare metals we just chatted about this. All of these. Pyroflux I haven't dealt with yet. I need to. I think I need to unlock some science. Anyway, all of this stuff we're not really anywhere near dealing with any of this just yet. We got some more uh, faffing and construction to do first. So, what we need to do is I need to zoom the camera out and I need to fill in this bus. I need to start connecting all of these things together and I need to start thinking about how I'm going to turn it on. What is the order um, now? 
the science that we don't have, the chemical science, I built that in my starter factory. So all I need to do is I, all, uh, is root some sulfuric acid and some red chips to my starter factory, and I will have blue science. But once I have blue science, I haven't really got anywhere. To, I haven't got any processes that I've already built that I can switch on. So I'm still thinking about how I'm going to turn it on. But what I need to do now is I need to sort out the bus. So let's do that. Right, conveyor belt's done, mostly. Most, there's still some areas I need to work on, still some parts that I'm not sure about, but you know, you know, chemicals are still completely blank apart from sand. <laughs> um, and I've also had to start make use of this, of the iron deposit that's in my, uh, in the way of my coal uh, oil production, because I've completely run drive iron in my starter factory, and I need it, I've run out of conveyor belts building this monstrosity, so. I tried. What I tried to do is I tried to group the processes. So along the perimeter, these are the main processes that um, deal with the pulverizers. So these are all the inputs and outputs that deal with the pulverizers, top and bottom. And then in the middle, I've dealt with all the things that I need uh, for the rest of the factory. Um, and then so I've got the kind of the gaps in the middle. Oh, please don't be bad. Oh, you should be okay. All right. So from here, um, I've been thinking about how I want to switch this thing on. Because it is a bit of a conundrum. Um, and, and what I've decided to do is... Okay. What I want to do is I want to build my shopping mall. You know, once I set, once I turn all of this stuff on, I want to route that material to something where it goes somewhere useful. And, you know, once I've turned the factory on, it's going to be making a whole load of noise. So I want that start that, that shopping mall to be making the things that I need to combat the biters. You know, I don't necessarily need... Um, to build them all for that you know i can i can upgrade the turrets that i have but you know all of this material i feel like if i'm making this noise i want it to be justified so i want to be using this material somewhere so what that's what i want to do what i really want to do is i want to move the camera and start building the shopping mall but the the issue is the conundrum is that for the purposes of the time lapse where the camera is right now is the perfect position to turn this stuff on you know we're zoomed out We've got the whole, basically the whole factory in in picture. It, it's the it's the right moment to switch all of that stuff on. So I think that's what I'm going to have to do for the purposes of getting the time lapse right. Um, I'm going to switch all of this stuff on first and then move to the shopping mall. But I I want you to be aware that if there was no such thing as a time lapse and that wasn't part of the deal, then. I would be building this completely differently. It's one of those situations, you know. These 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 kind of things happen. Scenarios happen quite regularly when you're building these time lapses. You know, you've got to. It's, it's economy of movement. You know, you want to capture as much as you can with what you where the camera is at any one moment in time. I mean, let me, let me put it in perspective. I, I compiled all of the time lapse that I've got up to now, and it's like four and a half, five minutes of footage so far, just of this of what we got so far. You know, that is going to be an unmanageable time-lapse video. So if I can get some extra capture with the, you know, if I can capture more of the story with where the camera is right now, then I think I need to take that opportunity because it will save some time down the line. However, that's it for this episode, I'm afraid. We are a long ways, we are a long ways towards some actual thing happening now. Turn on, switch on, you know, starting to process some materials. We shouldn't be too far away. But that'll be the next episode, so I hope it's been good. Till next time. <laughs>